Hi, my name is Mark Fleming, and today I'll be presenting a tutorial on using Microsoft Excel to create professional figures. This video is designed for ME4031 Basic Measurements Lab at the University of Minnesota. On the agenda, we want to talk about what the basic figure standards are for this course, what the Excel template does wrong, and how we can format Excel to meet the basic standards that we require in this course. So, why do we want to talk about figures in Measurements Lab? As we know, Measurements Lab is a writing intensive course where we'll be writing scientific reports. Data presentation is a key component of the writing process, and therefore, we want to discuss what the basic standards are for data presentation. In particular, we'll focus on clarity and aesthetics. So, let's go ahead and take a look at an example of what we'd expect in a Measurements Lab report in terms of a figure. Here's an example of the figure which is fairly similar to the time constant lab you'll be conducting as one of your early experiments. Over the next several slides, we'll break down each of the key components, which are seen here, in terms of both clarity and aesthetics. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we wanna talk about is the data symbols. So for measurements lab, you'll be taking experimental data, which should be presented using only markers, which means no lines. The reason for this is when you take experimental data, your data points will occur at discrete points and your figure should of course represent this. So we wanna make use of that by using only markers. In this case, we've chosen a circle and a triangle for our two markers. When you do choose your marker, you should make sure that your markers are clear, easily, easy to identify, and of course go through and label them. In general, you wanna try and avoid using color because you may not always print your figures in color. Uh, so when you choose your markers, you need to take this into account. In this case, we've chosen a solid black and a white and black triangle marker. Uh, this allows us to have multiple uh, data series without using color. You should also include a symbol key when you have more than one data series, which we have in this case. And that should ideally be located within the figure boundary. When you have a lot of data series, it may be difficult um, to do this, but ideally you want to waste as little space as possible. If you only include one data series, you don't actually need to include a symbol key or legend uh, because the data should be clearly defined in your figure caption. The next part of a figure is including the axis labels and tick marks. So let's take a look at both the X and Y axis here. Each one should include a descriptive label and of course units. In this case, we have temperature, which is in degrees Celsius, and time, which is in, has the units of minutes. When we format the axis, in particular the units, we should always make sure to make use of the appropriate symbols and use subscripts or superscripts as needed. In this case, we include a symbol for the degree symbol over here, uh, so it's degrees Celsius, but we don't have to make use of any superscripts. An example of that is shown right here, where we include the meters squared and then the second to the minus one power. Uh, please make use of the subscripts and superscripts in all of your figures and do not use the little carrot symbol as that essentially looks unprofessional. In terms, the last thing I wanna talk about is in the major tick marks. In terms of including uh, marks on your fig along the axis, we've chosen to include only the major tick marks and we've made those tick marks face inward. The reason we chose to include the inward facing tick marks is to create a clean boundary along the edge of the figure uh, for aesthetic reasons. We've also included that sec in the secondary Y axis and the secondary X axis up here. You can include minor tick marks and those should be of course formatted the same way as your major tick marks. Uh, you should however try to avoid grid lines as that tends to clutter the figure. So the last part of the figure that we wanna talk about is of course the figure caption. The figure caption should be recruited in any figure in a report. The figure caption goes below the figure in the report and it always starts off by saying figure and then the number, uh, the figure number. Uh, each figure should be sequentially numbered and then provide a detailed description of what the data that is presented in the figure and any relevant information that, you, that needs to be included. Uh, your figure captions can be longer than one sentence to include all of this information, but you should still try and be succinct as possible when you're writing the uh, figure caption. So here we've included a figure checklist, which essentially summarizes all the information that we've talked about. So please make use of this and refer to this as you need to. 
Now, we'd like to go ahead and take a look at what the default Excel uh, format gets wrong and why we need to fix this. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that Microsoft Excel does wrong is it includes a figure title. Figure titles have no purpose in, an ex in any sort of figure as all of the information should be presented elsewhere. So never include a figure title. In this case, Excel chose to place the x-axis in the middle of the figure, which tends to clutter up the figure a little bit. So we need to move that down to the bottom of the figure. The default Excel template also provides no location for access labels and units, so we need to include those uh, in the figure. Those are a very important thing to include. Uh, in general, the font is gen usually too small, so we do need to increase the font size. In this figure, you, should, you may be able to read the figure, um, the captions, uh, depending on how large you have the screen, but by the time you put this into a Word document and then print that, the font size will be way too small to read. So we do need to increase the font size for any sort of document. In this case, Excel also chose to put the uh, figure key off on the right hand side, which creates a lot of wasted white space. So what we want to do is we want to move that over onto the figure. So we reduce the amount of white space that we have and we increase the space utilization that we have. As I mentioned before, grid lines tend to add clutter to a figure and that's taking away from the clarity of the presentation uh, for data. So we'll have to go ahead and remove those grid lines. And then and Excel also makes use of color, which is not always necessarily the best thing. So we may have to change these to black and white. In this case, uh, the color is a redundant feature because there are differences in the symbols. But if you are printing in black and white, you wanna make sure that you format it appropriately. So in this case, as I just mentioned, the symbols are different, but that may not always be the case for the Excel default template. Uh, this may just be a case where Excel got lucky with its uh, data formatting. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and shift over to Excel, and we're gonna take that same data that we were just looking at it and go through the formatting process to meet the basic standards for this course. Okay, so this part of the video, we're gonna go ahead and work through an example. I went ahead and loaded up the Microsoft Excel file, which contained all of the raw data that we're gonna use. In this case, uh, this is the same data that we saw in the previous part of the presentation. So to get started, let's go ahead and create a figure. So let's go to insert, and then we're going to create a scatter plot. Uh, the scatter plot, by default, we wanna only include the data markers. We don't wanna include any lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move this into a new chart so we have a little bit larger working area and we can see all of the components that we're gonna be discussing. The first thing that we wanna do is get rid of all of the additional components that aren't required. So let's get rid of the grid lines and of course the chart title. The next thing that we need to take care of is we need to add in the axis titles. So let's go ahead and do that. And on the Y axis, let's go ahead and type in the temperature. And that was in degrees Celsius. And to insert the degree symbol, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here, select insert, and go over to symbol. Uh, the degree symbol is located in the symbol palette. You may have to look for it. Mine is also in the recently used. And just hit enter. For the x-axis, uh, we're going to do something similar. We're just going to type in time and remember that the units were minutes. So you have to choose which units that are appropriate for your plot. Uh, here, now we should take a look at the moving this x-axis down because we want that at the bottom of the figure. Uh, here it kind of clutters the figure and doesn't look professional. So to move the x-axis down, what we're gonna have to do is we have to double click on the y-axis. That'll bring up our axis format options. And then we select the axis value where we want it to cross. And we just type in a large negative number. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as it's uh, well below any of the data points. So in this case, it just moved it down to the bottom. While we're still in the axis format options, let's go ahead and add in our tick marks. So if we remember, we wanted the major tick marks to occur on the inside of the figure. And let's repeat that process then for the x-axis. We also want the major axis tick marks to occur on the inside. So we have both of those, uh, though it is a little bit hard to see some of the axis labels just because of the font size. So let's go ahead and adjust the font size. So I'm gonna click on the, the outside part of the figure so we have the whole figure selected. And then I'm gonna go to the home uh, tab and then I'm gonna go ahead and increase the font size to 16. Increasing the font size to 16 is probably a good starting point. Depending on when you insert this into your actual Word document, you may need to adjust that. Um, so you may have to iterate a few times on the font size, but 16 is usually a fairly good starting point. The next thing we want to take a look at is our legend down here. 
So with a little bit larger font size, we see that there's a lot more space down here that is kind of wasted by having this legend down here. So let's go ahead and select that we want it to overlap with our chart. And so that just moves this down. And then I'm gonna say, let's include this up in the top right corner. Uh, so you can see that I moved it up here and it now stacks it vertically. I'm gonna go ahead and try and shift this in a little bit just to keep our space uh, utilization uh, to the to the minimum with the, the to the title here. So uh, you can see here we got it a little bit closer. Um, in the end, we'll probably have to move this a little bit uh, just for formatting purposes, but uh, right there is a good starting point for right now. So the next thing that we need to take a look at is actually our data series. So if we notice the default that Excel chose was a circle, but it chose a circle for both data series. So if we chose to plot this in black and white, we would have no way to differentiate between our, our first data series and our second data series because it's using color. So let's go ahead and assume that we have to print this in black and white and let's format our, our data series appropriately. So the first thing let's do, let's go ahead and collect, click on our first data series and it brings up our format data series option. Let's go ahead and select our marker type and let's just remember, assume that we're gonna print this in black and white. So let's just choose black as our, our border color. Uh, let's choose a fill color for of black as well. And then let's go up to our marker options. And then let's let's keep it as a circle. I think a circle is pr pretty clear, but this is pretty small. I mean, it, it's, it's okay for looking at it right now, but when we put this over into a Microsoft Word document, uh, those, those icons will be really small. So let's go ahead and increase our marker size. Uh, seven looks better. That should be pretty clear when we, we adjust the size of this figure for the Word document. So let's go ahead and repeat this and uh, for the second data series. So let's change our marker type. Uh, let's just go ahead and use triangles. Uh, I used triangles in the previous example and I think it's pretty clear. So let's just choose a different marker type. Um, you can choose one that you think is appropriate. I just thought triangles was a nice uh, shape change. And I'm also gonna increase the, the size of those so it matches with the other, other series. Uh, let's go to the fill color and I'm gonna choose no fill for this case that we have a white marker with a outlined border. And then for the border color, let's go ahead and just say black. Uh, this allows us to have essentially a black and white figure and we have two methods of distinguishing our data set. The first is a solid, the one is a circle, one is a triangle, so we have shape. And the second one is the fill of the, the shape. So this one has a solid fill, this one of course has a white fill. Uh, so this is a way you can increase the number of data series that you can include while maintaining a black and white uh, figure. One thing I will suggest that you try and avoid is using any of the plus or X markers if you can. Uh, those become very hard to see, especially as you decrease the size of the figure for the Word document. So, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at how this will now look in Microsoft Word. So let's go ahead and click on the outside. I'm just gonna do Control C to copy it, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring up a new Word document here. So here's an example Word document, and to put the figure in, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna right click and go ahead and paste this as an image. The reason I paste it as an image is it avoids causing any of the formatting issues that can occur uh, if you just try and paste a picture directly in with Microsoft Excel. Uh, the one thing that it does do is it puts in a very large figure. So let's go ahead and decrease the width of this figure. I'm just gonna say four. Four is a decent sized figure. If you do anything bigger for a width than four, you might end up having too large of a figure. Again, you're gonna have to probably iterate this as you, for size uh, once you get into the document. So we can see here in the document, we have this figure. Uh, we're zoomed out pretty far. So we can kind of see that we can still read all of the font. So that's a good thing. Uh, but we still have some, some weird format issues here. So we see, first of all, uh, we see that we have this boundary here along the outside of the figure. So I'll zoom in a little bit now. Uh, you can see that we have this weird grid line boundary that surrounds the figure. That's kind of weird. Uh, it doesn't look real professional. So we need to figure out how to remove that. And then the other thing that we need to do is once we remove that boundary, we need to add some boundaries here on the uh, the right hand side and the top side. So this would be the secondary Y axis and where the secondary X axis would be located. So let's go ahead and go back to Excel and take a look at how we can fix that. So the first issue is actually a really easy fix. So what we'll do is we'll select the right, or select down here in the, the open space of the figure and we'll go up to format and we'll just select the shape outline and we'll say that we don't want any outline. And that gets rid of that weird box that goes around the figure. Uh, it's really weird that Excel chooses to do this by default, but uh, we wanna go ahead and get rid of that. It looks tacky and shouldn't be in any sort of figure. The next thing we need to do is a little bit more tricky. 
um, and that's to create the extra border along the right hand side and the top. So this is easy because I have a secondary uh, data set in here, uh, but if you only had one data series, what you can do is you can uh, put in a fake data series and then do the same, same formatting issues that we're gonna go through with the fake data series, and then you'll just go ahead and hide the markers. Uh, but again, that's only if you have one data series. In this case, I've, I chose to have two, so this becomes a little bit easier. So I'm gonna select the secondary data series. I'm gonna go over here to marker. Uh, actually, sorry, I'm gonna select the chart here. And then I'm gonna say, I want this to occur on the secondary axis. And you can see here that Excel decided to put in the secondary axis along the right-hand side. Uh, we do have to do a little bit of formatting now. So if you see, we have uh, this rescaled the, the secondary axis just based on the one data series. Uh, and that's not gonna look real good because we have the same, same information, so temperature plotted on both the, the primary and the secondary. So what we can do is we wanna scale the secondary axis to be the same as the primary axis over here because we don't need this, all the information to be repeated. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna select the, the axis uh, I'm going to go ahead to the format um, format options here, and I want to scale this to be the same as the the primary primary y. So let's go minus 35. Uh, then the maximum is going to be 20, and then you notice that we need to rescale uh, the major uh, unit, so change it to five. So you can see now that the these will match each other. The tick marks will be occurring at the same spot. However, Excel likes to default with the tick marks to the outside, so we do need to change that to put those back on the inside. And then we see that it's essentially duplicated on each side. But now we still have that the labels, uh, which are located on the right-hand side. So what we're gonna do is on the right-hand axis, which is the second secondary, we're just gonna say we don't want any data labels because that's redundant. So that removes those data labels and we're left with a really nice clean boundaries for this figure. So uh, that's how we're gonna add the secondary uh, secondary y-axis. Uh, we still are missing a boundary up here on the top, and there's a really easy way to add that in now. Since we have the secondary axis already added in, we're just gonna go ahead and add in the secondary horizontal axis, uh, and we're gonna go ahead and close that. We don't have to worry about rescaling it in this case because I didn't do anything to the primary x-axis. So let's go ahead and just do that same uh, trick that we did before. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change the tick marks to the inside, and then I'm gonna go ahead and remove the data labels. Uh, so none, and then we have a really nice top boundary. So if we uh, click down here in the bottom corner, now we'll have a really nice boundary along the top side, the, the right hand side, and then we'll get this nice bounded figure. So at this point, we can uh, go ahead and copy this over into Microsoft Word. So let's do that, so I did Control C. And here's our first figure, I'm just gonna hit enter. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in as a figure again. Again, it comes in really large, so let's go ahead and downsize that to four inches, uh, same as what we did before. So here's our first figure, here's our second figure. It's not bad. Uh, I, I did probably wanna move this a little bit, maybe move this either a little bit closer to the corner, or if I'm worried about this data symbol, overlapping with uh, the, this data series here and being confused, I can do is I can move it down here. I have plenty of space to move this around. Uh, that's something you know, you'll have to do for your own chart uh, based on where you have space in your figure. So uh, I'm not gonna go back and, and redo that. That's kind of nitpicky, but uh, I just wanted to point that out. So then the last thing we need to do is that we talked about in the presentation is of course include a caption. So to include a caption in Microsoft Word, what we'll do is we'll just right click on the figure and we'll go down to this insert caption. So we, it brings up this caption format, and then you'll, I like to include a colon here, and then you type something uh, for a caption, so temperature. And you'll include a really detailed uh, version of a caption. I just am gonna keep it short for the purposes of this video. In this case, you can see it, it comes up with the figure number, and then of course, whatever you typed in for a caption. If you didn't feel like typing your entire caption into that little window, you can go ahead and type it here, and it'll stay in the caption format. One thing I do note is I do not like the default Microsoft Excel or Word format for captions. So what you can do is you can click up here, go to the caption icon, right click, say modify. Uh, ideally this should be black and instead of italicized, it should be bold. So let's go ahead and make that change. And you can see right here, we have made that change and it comes up. Font size is pretty similar to what we have in the figure. So that's pretty good. And of course you'll type out a really detailed uh, figure caption. 
The nice thing that's really cool about using the caption uh, feature in Microsoft Word is if I have multiple figures, so let's say I go ahead and add a caption here, it'll automatically number the figures. So you can see now this is figure one and this automatically uses figure two. So I'd highly recommend that you take advantage of Microsoft Word's caption feature when you are adding figures into your reports. So the last thing I do want to touch on is if we go back to Microsoft Excel is now that you spent all this time formatting this figure, you may not want to do this necessarily for every single figure that you have to make. So what you can do is you can save this as a template. Uh, you still would have to do some modifications to it but it will save you a little bit of time. So if you want to save it as a template, you just right click on the figure and you hit save as template. Uh, you can see I already have one example here. I'm just gonna go ahead and rename or save over this example file. And I'm gonna hit save. It's gonna tell me, do you want to save? And then I say yes, and now I have a template of this, of this figure. So now whenever you wanna essentially go back and create a new uh, figure, what you can do is you can click on uh, go to the insert tab, uh, you can go to the charts, and you can uh, select uh, essentially go to your templates and you can use whatever you filed, uh, save that file as, uh, assuming you've saved it in a, a location that Excel can find, and it will default to that template that you have uh, saved. So that's a really nifty thing that you can do. It will save you time as you move forward uh, through the rest of the term uh, creating figures for this course. All right, well, thanks for watching. That's all I have, and have a good day.